Yeah. yeah. Well, now, our our thought is this morning is that we don't want to to take too much of your time. We don't have anything. But that I got uh, and uh, I go do a little studying, and then I'm going to get ready pretty soon. To I got to go to dinner today with some people, and I thought before too much gets piled in, there's a lady minister coming from uh, up in uh, here, Brother Jack Moore's sister, that uh, she wants to talk to me about women preachers, and I know she used to be in today, and I thought I'd get over here first. And uh, the first thing I want you all to know, this is recording, isn't it, Leo? There's a first thing I want you all to know, you see. And that's uh, Sister uh, um, Gibson. Gibson and Sister um, Sewell. Sewell and Sister uh, Simpson. And, um, the question was asked me about um, water baptism. And I, That's what we want to know. you want to know about. I, I would like for you all to know first that I have my objective is not to try to show uh, like you as some mastermind or know more than somebody else. Uh, my objective is to try to explain the best of my knowledge by the scriptures what is right and wrong and it's always been my objective to never uh, compromise on anything that God has written and never say it's right because somebody else says it's right but it's got to be that way now it might be this that in the future if you'd listen to this tape that we're talking on it might be good I tell you the reason why um, can you all hear me well enough yes I, the, um, uh, I think our Heavenly Father has people made up in certain ways for his own benefit just like if we do things certain ways different each time because it, we have a purpose of doing it some time ago, I was sitting down in, in the state of Kentucky a, a talking to um, uh, some of my brethren. And when I go home and I can have a little time off from the meetings, there's usually a great crowd piling in, you see. And then I get so nervous. After all night, see, you don't get no rest at all. They just come day and night. I get real nervous. Then I'll either pick up a fishing pole and go fishing or... A, it's hunting season I'll get my rifle and go hunting well rifles is one of my favorite things to fool with shooting targets yeah. brother Gene here and I uh, he's beginning hand loading now and we're we just love to do it and then uh, I had a little what to call a model 75 a Winchester rifle 22 well that's what I hunt squirrels with well uh, I hunt the squirrels at 50 yards and at 50 yards I keep messing with this little rifle till I can drive a tack with it at 50 yards and the other day I put nine bullets in the same hole is that right brother Gene? at 50 yards with a 22 rifle now well all at once it went out I usually if the squirrel is looking at me I won't shoot him if he's got his back turned to me I won't shoot him he has to be setting so I can just see his eye. And if I happen to hit him low from the eye or above the eye, I know there's something wrong with my rifle. See? So I just, uh, I don't try to lie to myself and I just, and I don't take uh, no more squirrels than what the law allows me to take. See? Because that's right, I'm a conservationist. But I just, I find one and he's too far away, I just let him alone. And if this one's too close to me, I'll back up to 50 yards. And I watch him go out and get a hick or nut and come back. He's looking at me. I just let him alone. The next time he gets one, maybe ten minutes later after he cuts that one through, he'll go get one. Maybe he's got his back turned. I wouldn't shoot him like that. So if he goes away, let him go. I'll hunt me another one. See, because I miss. I just, and I love them. They're the best meat there is in the world. There's nothing compared with a gray squirrel, especially when he's cutting beech or hickory or something like that. So my rifle went out. Now. A rifle is a strange thing to fool with. 
it, it's something that it takes the tension off of my nerves and things now other people wouldn't give a care for it and um, I believe our gracious brother Or Roberts I think he plays golf and so does our brother Billy Graham they play golf that would get on my nerves out there them women half dressed and things like I couldn't stand that see I did but now maybe them brothers I don't mean to get out there for that purpose see oh, no. no because they are they're they're gentlemen they're Christian brothers but just to get out around there I couldn't stand that see it met, and playing golf I, I that seemed like it's for it's for women or something you see hit a ball with a stick and run out there now that them brothers might think same thing sitting around fools an old rifle well you know we're made up different and so um this rifle, the least little vibration of any way will throw it off. You can be shooting and driving attack with it and put your finger on the barrel, it'll, it'll just ruin your shooting. See? That's how, how accurate it has to be. Okay, wrap your hand around the forearm, lay it level in your hand. And then you say, what's all this got to do with what we're asking you? But I'm trying to get you to something first. Have a background. Now, one day it went out, and I've done everything I know how to do to make it to bring it back in again. I tried rebedding it, I tried um, tightening, loosening, and everything else. And a 22, you can't hand load it because the primer's in the hull, and you have to take factory loaded ammunition. Now, where we load, load the ones that's got the, the big shells, where we can knock the primer out and get a resizer and things, while we we can load that and keep changing powders and grams and weights of bullets and. So we get it to where it'll shoot what it will shoot or either then we go into the bedding and so forth therefore we couldn't do it on that one but I said well maybe I'll ruin the bedding I'll send it back to the Winchester company and I'll return it into Winchester company and they wrote me a letter which I take for just a, a commemoration of it they said Reverend Brandon this model 70 Winchester was not made to be a target gun thing said it'll group an inch seven shot group it'll group an inch at 25 yards and said you'll never get it any better than that because that's perfect for that type of gun an inch at 25 yards I know that was wrong I done put nine shots one hole in the other to 50 yards with it and that was a Winchester company made it now I look like someone would say well if the engineers patent that gun and they ought to know what's in it and if they made the gun, then why would you, that's what my wife said to me. She said, Billy, why would you fool with that gun after the man who designed it and made it and knows even how much gas is in every shell and every ring that's in it and everything else? How, how would you try to dispute their word? I said, well, honey, not long ago you were asking me a Bible question. And you had the answers in the back of the Bible. And you asked me, did God give Abraham uh, that ground that he promised him and uh, and uh, or she asked me and I said no he never gave him the ground he promised it to him but he never he never possessed any he never got it. and so she said uh, oh I got you on that one she said here's the answer he did give it to him and I said turn to Acts 7 <laughs> not so much as the place to put his foot on that's right it, it wasn't given to him now See, sometimes our written out man answers can be wrong. And the man that makes the gun can be wrong because I've already known I drove nine straight tacks into a piece of paper in the same hole at 50 yards of that gun. And they said, if seven bullets cover it, you take an inch at 25 yards, half the distance, you'll never get it better. To me, they were wrong. Whether they are the masters of the gun or not, because I know better. See? And I sat down under a tree one morning and Brother Woods and Brother Charlie, who hunts with me, and there were squirrels everywhere. Well, I'd shot at one a couple days before that, missed its eye, hit way down on the cheek. Of course, killed the squirrel as dead as it hit him in the eye. But the gun was out to me. It makes me nervous because that gun's not perfectly in it. I, I don't do me no good to go hunt. See, because I don't hunt for the meat of it anyhow. I, I just hunt for sport. And um, so I said, uh, that's... Uh, it's, I was sitting under a tree, a little leaning tree. I could go to it this morning there in the mountains of Kentucky. And I sat back around that tree, listening to Charlie over here just banging away. They'd, I don't care what any of the squirrel he shot, this other shot squirrel. That if their gun was grouping anyway, just so it hit the squirrel, and if it was in the hips or in the mid center or anywhere it hit him, that's all right. And so, and uh, I said, well now, 
that don't I, I just couldn't stand that and I sat down there and I thought just look at the fun them fellows are having and they love to hunt just as well as I do and they're both fine good shots they're a dandy man both of them Christians filled with the Holy Ghost and just fine man some of the highest caliber of man and then brothers up there just had the most fun shooting squirrels and there were squirrels jumping through the trees right by me well I said then why would I do a thing like that sit here and here I am sitting here crying just tears running down my face there they are and here I can't even hit the target and I raised up and I said Heavenly Father why did you make me like this a little nervous upset uh, uh, person and then your grace has given me literally millions of friends see and I said why would you make me a person like this and I started weeping right out loud then, sitting under a little leaning tree, right sort of a mountain. And uh, and I knew soon those fellows had had their limit of squirrels and back, and there I was sitting there just, oh, I just didn't have the nerve to shoot at one of them because I was afraid it hurt him, you know, and they didn't get, get away, see. And I just, and my gun, I'd for a season isn't very long, and I'd been then for, well, half the season's gone to try and get that rifle back. I sent the scope where it had it mic'd. And they said that scope is perfectly right. Well, I knew it was a rifle because it's throwing one one way and one another. A scope hardly wouldn't do that. So I sat down there and I, I just wept. And after sitting there a little bit, kind of helped my head over, I heard him speak to me. Uh, you all stood last night in the meetings. See how he could go out into the audience anywhere there, wherever he desired me tell the people all about their conditions and who they were and where they come from and what they had done and what will be. You ever see it fail? Never fails. It can't because it's him. Well then, he was speaking to me and he said, uh, he said, I made you that way for a purpose. Now I said, why did you make me that way, Lord, for a purpose to be nervous and the only thing I have to relax me out of the meetings is come here and hunt and you let me see God makes everything work right for them that love him see he wanted to tell me something that's how that gun had to go out to get this very thing to me he said well I said my gun I said Lord you're the only one could bring it in I said you're the only one could help me because the regular Winchester company says that it won't group but one inch and 25 yards and Lord I know it I, I shot it at 50 yards and drove nine straight tacks see now, I know different from that he said that's the reason I made you that way he said you see you I made you that way so for a purpose now here's what it was see if I knew that it would drive a tack at 50 yards, I don't care who says anything different, I know it will do it. If it can get in the right condition, if the balance, the bullet, and uh, and uh, all the ballistics of the gun can be studied and fixed down because it done it one time, if it done it once, it'll do it again. Well, that's where he made known to me then. He made me that way on the count of the commission that he's given me for these days that I'm living in that I just can't go to a denominational church and join up with one when they'll just splatter well the church says this is alright and they accept this if, it, if, if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever if it drove the bullet there it'll drive it again I don't care what they say you see there's got to be some way that he is the same person He's the same thing. His power is the same. Now, when you hit a place like this, Matthew 28, 19, that you're asking me about this morning. Acts 2, 38. Jesus commissioned His disciples here, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, that's Mark 16 I'm quoting from. And now, that's when He commissioned them and He never mentioned how to baptize them there. Mark never wrote it down, but Matthew said, Matthew twenty-eight nineteen, he said, um, 
when he appeared to him and then so forth and commissioned to go to baptize he said uh, go ye therefore teach all nations and the right translation is that is make disciples of all nations baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded and ten days later Peter said repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ now there's a straight contradiction now most people will say well my church teaches be baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost the seminary I come out of taught me that so that's the way I'll do it to me that's not right I'm hitting over here and hitting over there I'm making a a 40 inch group that ain't make the scriptures right it's got the zero it's got the zero well then how does it go to zero when Matthew said baptize the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost and Peter said baptize the name of the Lord Jesus both of them disciples one a scribe another an apostle and then every person in the Bible was baptized after that was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and those who had already been baptized by John had to come and be re-baptized again in the name of Jesus Christ before they got the Holy Ghost. Well, I said, see, you're, you're not zeroed there. There's something right now. If we believe the Bible to be God's infallible Word, we can't make it splatter all over a piece of paper and then be zeroed. You understand me? It's got to hit the target or it ain't hitting if it's out, it's out. Well, why did Peter turn around and do something Jesus told him not to do? And then God recognized it and gave him the Holy Ghost. When, when Jesus said, Baptize him in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And Peter said, No, baptize in the name of, of Jesus. Now, you, you can't make that hit the target. See? Now, there's something wrong somewhere, sisters. See? Either one lied or... Or which one lied? Which one was it? Now, to me, that just won't work. Just like it is, but is uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost evidence speaking in tongues, or is it not? Some says yes, and some says no. What's the Scripture say about it? It's got the zero. I find there were some did speak with tongues, and some didn't. Well, what is it? Other outstanding question. Is women to be preachers? Yes or no? Some place said, I pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Another said, I forbid not a woman to speak in the church even. See? Now that don't zero. No, no. It don't zero. So they just don't leave it like that because the seminary, the factory said it was it's, uh, that's as good as you're going to get it. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. It's got to zero or it is no good. Well, now, if it's zeroed for them, it'll zero for me. If it's zeroed once and brought a results to claim the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and signs and miracles and wonders, it'll do it again. Amen. Now somewhere we we're, we got too much static on the barrel. See what I mean? This is a rude way to express it about shooting a gun, but I miss, I'm make, putting that for a base so you understand what I mean. It's static on the barrel somewhere. It's not bedded right. The powder is either too high or too low. Or either one screw's tight and the other's loose, or one too loose and the other tight, and there's that, something wrong it somewhere. Might be the guy who pulled the, bear, pulled the yeah. trigger too. Yeah, <laughs> that might be the guy behind the trigger. Is right. <laughs> but now, what is it then? Now, if there's a contradiction in the Word of God, so pine point blank as that is, then it's not the Word of the God that I know. If he can confuse himself and confuse his word and get confused himself, he is not infinite. He's finite like I am. Is that right? That word either has to be right and every bit of it right and it's zeroed or either it's not God's word. Now, many times people say, well, you see... Peter was all excited when he said baptize in the name of Jesus because at, at the, really Matthew said exactly what Jesus said. We don't care what Peter said. Well then, if Peter and Jesus wasn't in line with one another, then the rest of the Gospels might not be in line with one another. If one word of that contradicts the other one, 
then it ain't the word of God or the God that I know. Maybe John made some mistakes. Yeah, John might have made some. Which one was right? After all, it was, I don't know whether Jesus said that or not. See? Matthew wrote it. Mark never said anything about it. Luke never said anything about it. And John never said anything about it. But Matthew did. Well, then, maybe all of Matthew's gospel was wrong and Luke's... Well, then, which is right and wrong? See where you got yourself? No, sir, it's all got to be right. Then I wonder, why would God write a thing like that let it be mixed up? Even Jesus thanked His Father that He had hid this from the eyes of the wise and prudent and revealed it to babes such as would learn. Now, it's done that to throw the, the, the wise off the track. But the book is a revelation. Now, like when I go overseas and my wife writes me a letter and I sit down, she said, Dear Billy, I'm sitting here tonight. The children are in bed. I thought I'd write you a few lines to let you know what we did today and how we're getting along. We trust that God is blessing you and all like that. Now, I'm reading off the lines what she's writing. But I'm so in love with my wife and she's so in love with me. No matter what I write, we can read between the lines what we mean. Well, that's the way the Bible's wrote. Between the lines. You know many of my sermons like of uh, God turning Abraham and Sarah back to young people. You'd have to, you have to read between the lines to see how, what the Scripture says. You have to know, but it'll never get off the line. See? In between the lines, it'll just bring the lines together and make it one big picture. Now, it's got to be a love affair with God before you can ever get it because the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible and the Bible said that it is of no private interpretation, but it's inspired. Now, to your question. Have you got a Bible? Have you all got a Bible? Now, the first thing... No, that's all right. You, 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 you can mark it down. Now, I'm going to give you some illustrations, if you don't mind. And in this, then you'll, you'll see why. Now, I want to ask you sisters the question. I want you to be just as free as free can be. Now, stay on this subject on account of this tape because I mean that we could get off on initial evidence and everything else like that. But we'll make another tape for that, see, sometime. But this we're talking about the water baptism. Now, it looks like that Matthew and Peter, if they were shooting at the same target, they were way off the line somewhere. Now, now I'm going to take in, in my Bible and I'm going to read and, and you sisters, if you want to read it, just have, want the Bible or you want to mark it down or whatever more, you do as you want to. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to get you, I want you then to, um, to uh, after you do this, write it down and then if there's any questions, I want you to be sure and, and um, ask me now. Ask me so if at any future time on this tape that somebody would have to ask you a question, you might be able to come back and explain it. Now, in order to straighten these people out and to get these two uh, uh, down right, I I'm, I'm want to have to make uh, the almost blend two subjects together. Now, uh, in Matthew 28, 19, now that's the last book of the Bible, the last book of Matthew, last part of Matthew. Now, let's read the last verses. The uh, 18th verse. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I wonder, did he take all of God's power then? For all the power both in heaven and earth is it is in him now. All the power in both heaven and earth is given unto me. Where's God at with his power? Now, could Jesus lie? He couldn't lie. If he lied, then where are we? Now remember, he bear this in mind. 
that the church of the living God, not the denomination, the church of the living God, is built upon spiritual revelation. Now you get that in St. Matthew 17, or St. Matthew 16 it is, where he said, he said, who does man say I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, said Peter. He said, blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonas, flesh and blood, seminary, somebody else, never revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven, thou art Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church. Now see, the Catholic says, upon Peter. If that's so, then he backslid. Mm -hmm. All right. The Protestant said, upon Jesus. But not to be different, but to make the thing straight. Mm -hmm. Neither on Jesus nor upon Peter, but upon the spiritual revelation. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven has revealed this to you. Then the word that's wrote in parables and everything else can only be revealed and the only truth will ever be known about is a spiritual revelation and if your revelation doesn't tie it together then your revelation's wrong. See? It must blend like if you was putting a jigsaw puzzle together and you didn't have anything on the side here to, to look was you'd get the scenes all mixed up. You'd say, well, I'll believe this goes here, I'll believe this goes there. That's a human mind. First thing you know, your scene would be wrong. It'd be a cow picking grass on top of a tree. See? So it, it wouldn't work. See? But if you if you got something here to go by, to go by, well, now you say, oh, God revealed to me of something. If it isn't according to this Word and ties the Word together, then your revelation's wrong. In the Old Testament, if a prophet prophesied, if a dreamer dreamed a dream, no matter how real it seemed, the first before the church ever would accept it, it had to be proven by the Urim Thundam. You know that. That breastplate of Aaron where the lights yeah. reflected. Now, when that priesthood ended, the Urim Thundam went with it. But we got a new Urim Thundam. That's the Word of God. And if your revelation doesn't tie in, you say, God revealed to me that I should be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. If that don't tie in with the Word, and from Genesis to Revelations and tie it together and your revelation's wrong. You say, God revealed me I should be baptized in Jesus' name. If it doesn't tie in with the Word then the Urim Thundam don't back it up. No matter how real it seems this is the authentic Word. This is God's Urim Thundam. Now, and Jesus, again I quote, repeat, and Jesus came and spake unto them the 18th verse saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, I want to ask you something. Now, I just... That's Matthew 28, 19. The scripture you're asking me to explain. What we have in view here this morning. Now, let's read that careful. Just don't, don't run over it. Read it careful. I watch closely. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, not in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. That's the way people baptize, baptize that way. That's not even scriptural. See, it isn't in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. That's wrong. That's not scriptural. And it isn't the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's in the name, N-A-M-E, singular. In the name. Name. Look. <laughs> while you look. In the name. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, now, if there's any word that you don't understand, I'm waiting for a sister uh, Sewell there to find it. You got it there? Oh, I know what. Matthew 28, 19. 19. 19 mm -hmm. Now, sister Sewell, I believe you was the one who's questioned the strongest. Mm -hmm. Now, does that say in the names of the Father, the Son? Mm -hmm. It says in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. No, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Not in the name, putting a name before each one. 
but just in the name of the Father and of the Son and Holy Ghost. Now, now we realize then there has to be one name there because it said one name. Well, I want to ask you which one of them names should we baptize in then? Now, is Father a name? No. So we couldn't baptize in the name of the Father because Father isn't a name, is it? Well, in the name of the Son, then we'd say, is a, a Son a name? I'm a Son, you're a Son, he's yeah. Son. Son's not a name, is it? Well, Holy Ghost, then. In the name of the Holy Ghost. We all got the Holy Ghost. Well, a here. A 17th well, century Gentile word. Uh, the, uh, let's say the, uh, in the name of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, is it a name? No, that's what it is. We're all human. That's what it is. It is the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost is not a name. That's what it is. We're all human, but that's not our name. The Spirit's not a name. See, no. It's a, there's three titles then, isn't it? Well then, what kind of a thing have we got here then? He said, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, if Father's no name and Son's no name and Holy Ghost is no name, they're not names. So you couldn't use that for a name because there's no name to it at all to begin with. Now, is, you understand that? There are not names. They are it's just like I'm, they call me a reverend. Some people call me a prophet. Some call me a preacher. Father. Well, now, uh, yeah, and I'm a father. Son. I'm a son. son. I'm legal. a human. But my name's William Branham. But but <laughs> reverend, prophet, or yeah. reverend, elder, and uh, minister, that's titles that belong to me. Well, then belongs to many other also, like soul, body, and spirit. That belongs to me too. But belongs to him, him, her, her, and all. See, it's all the same. See, it's titles, but that's not my name. That's not your name. Soul, body, and spirit's not your name. That's, not what, that's what you are. But it's not your name. Or you are a lady. You are a mother. You are a wife. A daughter. A daughter. Uh, yeah, all them things. Them, that's, that's just what you are. And say, you. I always call you doctor. You as a nurse. Yeah. Say, you are a doctor. Well, uh, you are a mother too. Mm -hmm. But that's not your name. If I just wrote doctor there's a lot of doctors if I wrote nurse there's a lot of nurses see but that's still not your name so when anyone says they was baptized in the name of Father, Son and Holy Ghost if they'd only think it's not even a mental it's not, it's not even it's not even mentally right a name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost it's just like the Catholic says eternal sonship the eternal sonship of Christ how can the word make sense how can he be a eternal and be a son? Son have us barred off of eternal had no beginning or end. If they say there's an eternal hell, Bible said hell was created. Then how can it be eternal? There's no eternal hell. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Not an eternal hell. Everything begin ends. Hell may have burned for a hundred billion years, but it has to have an end. Because everything begins in. That's the reason we can't die because we are part of God, offsprings of His sons and daughters. We got eternal life, God's life. It never did begin, never will end. See? Mm -hmm. Now this is pretty strong if you don't understand it. I'm afraid I'll get you out on <laughs> no. a limb here somewhere no, like us talking I to do. clergymen. No, now if you don't I understand, do. you tell me because usually you talk to clergymen like this, you see. But um, to you women, uh, uh, you just ask me and you're my friends. I studied it and I wanted to know. All right, now I'm trying. You're you're all educated and you're you're all smart, and I I don't want you to take this because Brother Branham said so. Now, I'm no, a human being. The word. I want you to take the word. And if you can find anybody that'll down that word, you bring them to me. If you can find anybody that says there's a contradiction in the Word of God, bring him to me. It's the, it, it just won't be. Try it. It, it won't. There's no need to try it because it ain't there. <laughs> think. Now, how could anybody be baptized? I want to ask you, ladies, something right now, or new man. How could anybody be baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost? 
How could you be baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Don't you see the bottom of it? There's no such a thing as the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Just saying words over them. That's, that's titles. Lily see? of the Valley. Li- Why well, don't you just say Lily of the Valley, Rose of Sharon, Morning Star, Alpha Omega? It'd be the same. You could be baptized just as well. Said I baptize you in the name of Alpha and Omega. Right. The beginning and end be just as well. It's a title. I baptize you in the name of the Lily of the Valley, the Morning Star, and the Rose of Sharon. It'd be just the same as titles. But we know who it belongs to. But there could be a lot of Morning Stars and Lily of the Valleys and Rose of Sharons. See, so not a father, not a, a father, son, Holy Ghost. They oh. is uh, that a uh, human? soul, body, and spirit or whatever more you want to make it. Now, now there's something wrong here somewhere, isn't there? Now you see that something's wrong here. We can't understand it then, let's say. Now, go ye therefore, teach all nations. Now, you're a nice little audience and I, I want to drill this so that you'll have a good understanding. See? Because I don't know many of my brethren might hear this tape. Mm-hmm. I never unchristianize no man or person for their ideas of Scripture. I base it up on if they're saved, they're trusting Jesus Christ. Whether they are Catholic, Protestant, Jew, or whatever they are, you're saved because you're born of Christ. But you've asked me a question. Why, Brother Bram, would you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ? All right? And why would you disregard... Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's your question. And as your brother and as a servant of Christ, I'm duty-bound to answer you. All right. Now, therefore, when you find out here to make this contradiction, now, just ten days after this, after Jesus said this, Peter had the keys of the kingdom. Matthew 16. I not, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, build my church, so forth. And I, get, I say it, thou art Peter, and I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind it in heaven. What you loose on earth, I'll loose it in heaven. Now that same man that had the keys turned right back around ten days after Jesus said this and said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for your missionary sin. Did you ever stop to think that Jesus would give a man that would be that scrupled up the keys to the kingdom? that would turn around and do vice versa what he said not to do? (laughs) The God of heaven manifested in flesh and would turn the keys over to a man that would make a mistake like that? The very first shot out of the box would do a thing like that? He didn't do it. I'm always bothered on that. All right, now now just... now, Now notice. He couldn't do that. But why did he give them keys to Peter then? He just plainly quoted it. Peter, you never learned this from some church or some seminary, but it was a revelation that come from heaven and upon this same revelation from heaven to straighten out the Word of God, I'll build my church. He knew Peter, he didn't, he didn't know mathematics. Peter didn't know algebra perhaps. Or neither did he know geometry, or, or I think it's said that he was an ignorant and an unlearned man, according to Acts the fourth chapter, or Acts the third chapter, I believe. Said perceiving that they were both ignorant and unlearned, he and John, as he healed the man at the gate called Beautiful, but taken notice that they had been with Jesus. So you see, he didn't lay it upon his seminary uh, theology that he could reveal this to him. Ooh. Not upon his seminary experience, because he had none. He doesn't yet today. No, I know. But he reveals it, see, to the one that had the revelation of it. Therefore, he could trust it to Peter. He might not have been able to trust it to Matthew or to John or to the rest of them. But Peter had the revelation. So then Peter turns around and says, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, see, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The promises to you. The man that had the keys that unlocked the kingdom for the first time, turning around and doing vice versa what Jesus said not to do. Now, it's either he was wrong. He made a mistake. 
He didn't fall out, our Lord's, or either he had a revelation of truth. Was that the rest of them, was, which was beyond what any of the rest of them had. Now, let's just stop before we go back. Just a minute. If it would have been wrong, why did God recognize it then and command all the rest of them down through the Bible to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? And every person in the Bible was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and every person up to the organization, organization of Catholic Church was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ at the Nicene Council. They formed this baptism of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, making a triune God out of one true God to bring in their, their trinity. And as God in beginning know that man would fall, therefore he put him on free moral agency knowing because... He could display his attributes to be a father, to be a son, to be a healer, to be a savior. How could he save less something lost? And in God was the attributes before there even was an angel or a molecule or anything. God was by himself alone, but he wasn't God because God is an object of worship. There was nothing for him to worship, nothing to worship him. But his attributes, attributes displayed something and made an angel. Then he was God. Then he made a man, giving free moral agency. He fell. Then when he fell, he became a savior. In the fall, he took sick, sickness, so he becomes a healer. See, it's displaying God's attributes. See what I mean? Now, he also knew that there had to be a lost people and a saved people. There had to be a false baptism. and a, So he puts it here. Again, a tree of knowledge. Here's one, Acts 2, 38, one, Matthew 28, 19. So how was it revealed to Abel? Abel, by faith, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. He didn't have no Bible to go by, so it must have been revelation to Abel. There was both boys. If God only requires a worship, then God was unjust to condemn Cain. Cain made an altar, built a church, worshipped, and made a sacrifice. Every religious thing that Abel did, so did Cain. Is that right? Yes. But Abel, by revelation, offered to God, which revelation he walked by faith, yes. a more excellent sacrifice. How did Abel know it, that it wasn't fruit of the fields that Cain offered? It was blood that brought him from the garden. Life was not in the fruit. Blood brought the life. It was revealed to him. A revelation. Here's the same basis he puts us on that he did on them back there. A revelation. Now, there can't be a contradiction. Now, you all wasn't always Christians. You were born sinners. I imagine as a little girl, I'm, I don't know whether you did or not, but I'm going to take all of us in the room to make an illustration here now so that you'll understand. Uh, when you were little girls, say you read love story magazines. Most all little girls do. Or any kind of magazine. It wouldn't have to be a love story, any story. See? Nice. Could have not been a, one of these modern book stand stores, but any store. Even the Romeo and Juliet, see? Well, you, uh, you, uh, you, you read a love story. And if, I'm showing you this way now so that you can catch it in a parable. If you picked up a storybook and you read it and it said, John and Mary lived happy ever after. Well, you get to wonder who's John and Mary. Who is John and Mary? Well, you just read the last words of the book. It said, and John and Mary lived happy ever after you begin to wonder who is John and who is Mary. Is that right? Now, there's only one way to find out who John and Mary was. Go back to the first of the book. Start reading. Is that right? Yes, well, now, this is the last chapter of Matthew. If the last book of Matthew, he said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And Father's no name, and Son's no name, and Holy Ghost is no name. Who are they? Now, let's take it this morning upon the same basis that we would to John and Mary. Let's go back to the first of Matthew and find out. Turn back to the first chapter of Matthew. All right. See who John and Mary is that lived happy ever after. How much more time? Mm -hmm. 
All right. Now, now I want to ask you, sister, something as you look at me, you brethren. <clears throat> Who was the father of Jesus Christ? God was. Is that right? Was God his father? Yes. All right, sir. God is His Father. We all agree upon that. Amen. I believe with all my heart that God is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Now we're going to see if the Bible says that God's His Father. Now, Jesus said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I'm laying these three uh, record boxes out here. This is the Father. This is the Son. This is the Holy Ghost. Now you you can see all right. Now I want to I'm going to sort of question you, man, see if you listen to what I said. Who is this over here? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Who is this over here? Father. Who is this here? Son. Now who is this? Father. All right. I just want to see if you if you really catch it clear now. Now um, now uh, this is the Son of God. Is that right? All right. Now this here is what? Father. That's the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that right? That was His Father. I believe that He is the virgin-born, unadulterated Son of the living God, God our Father, which is the great Spirit that never He was never had no form. Even you see, He was He was God. He was just He was before a star, molecule, or atom, or anything else. He's God that covers all time, space. He's eternal. I believe that Jesus is the Son of the true and living God, and that's this person right here. That I got wrote on this box, Father. Is that right? Mm. And this is the Holy Ghost. And this is the Son. Now, let us read. Matthew 1. Now we start off the book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob, uh, Judah, and his brethren. Goes on down giving the genealogies. Now, to save our time, We'll come down and the genealogy ends after, and so all from the 17th verse. So all the generations from, um, all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From, uh, David unto the carrying away of Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away of Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Now, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, are you reading with me, Sister Sue? Mm -hmm. Before they came together, she was found with the child of God the Father. And did I read? Am I reading right? No. Oh, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Found with the child of who? The Holy Ghost. Oh, I'll say. Now, who is his father? Oh, you said this was his father. Yes. And the Bible said this was his father. She is found with a child, not of God the Father. God the Father had nothing to do with it. He is a child of the Holy Ghost. Is that right? Let's see if that still reads on right. Maybe we made a mistake. 19th verse. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willingly to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take of thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of God our Father. Mm -hmm. Conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Oh. And the Holy Ghost was given there. Now, now, then, which one of these is His Father? Now, if the Holy Ghost is His Father and Jesus said God was His Father, now, is He a bastard child? Could He be? Could both of these gods make one child? If it is, he was a bastard child. Illegitimate is a better word, but the very word means the bastard mm -hmm. child. Well then, if he is a bastard born child, then where, where are we at in salvation? If God the Father was his father, and the Bible says the Holy Ghost is his father, then we're, something's wrong again. Is that right? Yeah. See? You, you, there's something wrong somewhere. Now, what, what are we going to do? Are we worshiping an illegitimate born child by two different gods? One God was said was his father, and then the uh, the Bible said here our word of God says that the Holy Ghost was his father, and Jesus said God was his father, 
And other places in the Bible said God was His Father and called Him the Son of God and God the Father. And now God the Holy Ghost. Oh, poor, blinded, Trinitarian people. What? The word Trinity don't even appear in the Bible. Not from Genesis to Revelation. There's no such a thing. It's not three gods. It's three offices of one God. God the Father in a pillar of fire. God the Son made manifest in flesh to take away sin. And God the Holy Ghost in us now here. I'll be in Sure. Sure. Be with you even in you. See? It's not three gods. It's one God. Now, now look. You're going to have to admit that the Holy Ghost is His Father. Is that right? Is the Holy Ghost His Father? Does the Bible say so? <laughs> well, look here. Let, me, let me read it again. Yes, no. No, let, that God is His Father. That's right. Well, then, if the Bible says that the Holy Ghost is His Father, the Holy Ghost and God is the same person, or He had two fathers. Is that right? The same person. You're going to huh? do that trinity. Well, there she has. It's done flying away now. It never was so in the beginning. It never was so. See how, how it has to come by revelation? See? Now, now, either God was His Father or He wasn't His Father. And the Holy Ghost was His Father or it wasn't His Father or the Bible tells a lie. So, to make the revelation right and see if Peter had the same revelation that I have of it. Yeah. Now, see. Now, God the Father and the Holy Ghost is the self-same Spirit. Mm-hmm. Or He had two fathers. He couldn't be conceived of God the Father of one Spirit and God the Holy Ghost another Spirit. Then He had two conceptions. <laughs> See? Mm-hmm. So He couldn't be that way. He just couldn't actually be. Either one's right and the other's right. If there's three gods and these two gods, if these two gods, one God the Father and one God the Holy Ghost, which one of them really was His Father then? Question? Well, yeah. that Holy Ghost and God's the same. Now you got it. There you are. All right. Now that's one. All right. Now let's keep on reading. Now we're going to find out what Matthew twenty-eight nineteen is. Now let me read this over again now. 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus Christ on this wise, when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. All right. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willingly to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not taking thee, Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. All right, we make them two, then has to be the same one. All right. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name. What? Jesus. That's this person. Jesus. All right. Call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now this was all done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Being interpreted, God with us. Now, what is the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? God. Oh, God's an object of worship. Isn't it? <laughs> Jesus. What did you say? His name shall be called... Uh, Jesus. Jesus. That's right. Jesus. What was His name? Jesus. Emmanuel is the interpretation of God with yeah. us, you see. That just means God with us. Mm-hmm. See? I don't mean to say there can be any kind of God with us, you mm-hmm. see. But this interpretation... But what is the name of this God with us? Jesus. Jesus. His name shall be called Jesus. Jesus. Then when Peter said, when Matthew said, baptize them, in the, now what? who is Mary and John that lived happy ever after? See? You see who it is? When Peter turned around and said, baptize in the name of, uh, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Well, he'd done exactly what Matthew, if he said Father, Son, Holy Ghost, wouldn't even be mentally right. Now, why do you baptize, Brother Bram, in the name of, of Jesus Christ? Now, let us turn over here now. And just watch. Now, who had the keys to the kingdom? Peter. Who was it spoke on the day of Pentecost now and said, um, uh, Repent and be baptized, everyone, in the name of Jesus Christ? Peter was. All right. And the keys lock. What you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. That right? Yeah. What you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. That right? Now, how many tribes are there of the earth? Three. 
Ham, Shem, and, Je- Shem and Japheth's people. Now, that's Jew, Gentile, and Samaria. See? All right, they all sprung up from them three sons. If the, uh, God forgive me saying if the Bible, right? Of course, that was, all the earth was destroyed, but them, them three boys, that, that's exactly where our generation sprang from. Now, three wise men came to see Jesus. The astronomy says that they had fallen three different stars, and these three stars came together and made the one star, you see? And the three are one, always. See? Now, the three attributes of God makes one God. It's not God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It isn't three gods. Jesus, Philip asked that question. He said, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us, John 14. He said, I've been so long with you, Philip, you don't know me? He said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Now, I was explaining this to some women one day, and a woman said, wait just a minute, Brother Bram. said, they are one, that's right. said, so are you and your wife one. I said, but they're a different kind of one. And she said, I said, oh, she said, no, they're the same as you and your wife one. I said, oh, no. See? I said, do you see me? She said, yes. I said, you see my wife? She said, no, I don't even know her. I said, then Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. So I said, see, so they, they are different kinds of ones, see. I said, you see me, but don't see my wife. But when you see Jesus, you see God. He manifested God. He was a virgin-born son. And God the Father, which is the Spirit, dwelt in him. Now, a lot, a lot of Trinitarian people try to say, I was debating it not long ago. I find out don't do no good. Because... No man can come to God unless God foreknew him and called him before the foundation of the world. All the Father has given me will come to me, said Jesus. See? And this man tried to say, he was a, a Trinitarian, extremely, and he stood up before the class and he said, My precious friend, said Brother Branham, is a, one of the finest fellows, see? You see right then, I know this, uh, Jesus said, you hypocrites, how can you say good things for out of the abundance of heart speak of the mouth, see? And so, just trying to find favor with the people, he said, this is a church of Christ, man, and a so-called church of Christ. Of course, they're against all the true teachings of the Bible almost, and you couldn't call them, I don't mean to say anything against them people in there, but them ministers are, is, if you'll excuse expressions like the Irishman's owl, all fuss and feathers and no owl. So that's just about the way it is, you see. Just, uh, they, uh, they haven't got nothing to stand on. So, a modern Pharisee. Now, he said, but Brother Benham has been like a, a, in this discussion, said, wiggle out of everything like the worm in the lemon. But said, I would like for him to wiggle out of this one. And of course, all debaters hold the keynote to the last part of it. So then, he said, at the baptism in Matthew 3, the display of three persons, absolutely three distinct persons, the Son standing on the bank, the Holy Ghost like a dove in between them, God the Father speaking out of heaven. I said, sir, is that your keynote? He said, I want to hear you wiggle out of that one. I said, sir... You just wiggle back and read the Scripture the way it reads. I said, that's the only thing. You're just misreading the Scripture to the people. I said, that is thinner than the broth made out of a shad of a chicken is starved to death. I said, well, you're just, you're, you're, you're making it wrong, brother. You're misreading it to the people. And I said, now look here what the brother says. Now I'll take it like this. Like these I got, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now this year, it'd be the Holy Ghost, and that's the Son, this is the real Father. Now watch how they read that. When Jesus was baptized, went straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God like a dove descending. And a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am pleased to dwell. I said, See, three beautiful illustrations. The Son on the ground, the Holy Ghost like a dove in between, and the Father out of heaven speaking. See how the devil can stand there and deceive a person? If you don't have a revelation of God, of God isn't merciful to us, we ought to be thankful. He made that say something it didn't say, just like Matthew 28, 19. Make him say something it don't say. He never said baptize them. He never said baptize in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. He said baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. Now, let us take this illustration. Now, let's see. You're getting the Scriptures wrote down, Matthew 3 there. Last three or four verses. Now, 
I did depend on her. I all right, that's all right. She can. can. Her. And you can study it when you get. I'm giving you scripture so you can study it alone. Yeah. Now look, notice. Now they say that was the sun standing on the bank. This is God the Holy Ghost like a dove in between them, mm-hmm. and God the Father was speaking out of the heaven. Mm-hmm. Now look like that make exactly three different voices in three different places. Now, notice. Now, when Jesus is baptized, now we realize that heavens is, means above, uh, atmospheres, whatever it is, into heavens. Now, when Jesus is baptized, he went straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens was opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God. I thought you said God was up in heaven speaking. The Spirit of God like a dove. The dove was God. See, we just got through here. Holy Ghost and God's the same person. Mm-hmm. See? It's just a title to it. See? And he saw the Spirit of God, not another God up in heaven speaking, but the Spirit of God was in the form of a dove. That was that was the Holy Ghost, and it was God the same thing. See? The Spirit of God like a dove descended, and a voice from heaven, which was above him, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am pleased to dwell. Really the right translation is you got the verb before the adverb, like all the foreigner. It's this is my beloved son in whom I am pleased to dwell in, or whom I am pleased to dwell in whom I am pleased to dwell. That was God coming into Jesus, and in Him was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And there's your Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Sure, you get it. There's no there's no place in the Bible that speaks of three being a, a, a three gods. Uh, 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 there's no such a thing. It's absolutely pagan. It well, comes from pagan. That's away with that trinity. Yeah. <laughs> well, sure. It, it, it's just as it's just as bottomless as hell is. See, there's Billy no such Graham a thing. Needs that. What I say? Billy Graham needs that. Yes. Um, oh, he will. I needed it too. Look, listen. God, Billy Graham. It's revealed to those who God calls and is predestinated right. by His foreknowledge. All my sheep hear my voice. Right. Look at them Jews standing there, just as scholarly as they could be. And Jesus showing them he was Messiah by Messiah sign. He said he's Beelzebub. Yes. How could they were blinded? They drew a ragged shepherd up the hill. He believed. It. Yeah, and a little ragged shepherd or a or a fisherman down the river said well, they know him. See, he just God has a way of doing things, and we just have to cope with His way. I just be thankful that your eyes could be open to see truth. Now I'll challenge anybody. Not for not for fussing, but will come to me and sit down and show me Trinity one time in the Bible where there's three gods. If you show me three gods, I'll show you we're in darkness and pagans and heathens. There's only one God. God, God the Father. Truly, we believe in that. He was up in above all over this mountain when he sent it on the mountain up there. Why, even if a, as much as a cow touched the mountain, had to be killed. God the Father. But he wanted fellowship back with his man. He's trying to get man back to the Eden place where he was lost. See? Now the next thing he did, then God the Father overshadowed a virgin called Mary. And the hemoglobin, you know this by being a nurse, the blood cell comes from the male. Then somebody said, we're saved by Jewish blood. There's not one speck of the mother's blood in the baby. The baby lays in the blood of the mother. But the blood cell comes from the male cell. So he wasn't neither Jew nor Gentile. He was God. A creative blood. Not by sex desire. But a creative blood. See what I mean? Yeah. And then God's blood saved us. An unadulterated blood. He created himself. I mean he changed his cast from God to man. And came down was born of a virgin Mary. And the Holy Ghost which is God his father that overshadowed it came down and spread his tent and dwelt with us in the form of a man. That's God the Son. The same God that was God the Father. It isn't me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. See? That in me. That's right. The Father that dwells, tabernacles, lives, this is my beloved Son in whom I am pleased to dwell in. Matthew 3, see? In whom I am pleased to dwell. I am very pleased to dwell in this one. Dwell, that's to occupy, come in the house and live. 
In him was the fullness of the Godhead bodily, says the script. That's right. The visible image of the invisible God. Now, there he is. Now, that's God the Father, God the Son. And now, through breaking that blood cell, when the old priest in the Old Testament or the old order, a sinner brought a lamb. He laid his hand upon the lamb. His throat was cut because he'd sinned and this lamb died for his sin. Now, the reason he went out, says Hebrews, with the same desire that he had coming, if he committed adultery, he goes back out with the same desire. If he could kill, he goes back out with the same desire, hatred. Because when that blood cell of the lamb was broke, that blood cell in the lamb was an animal's life. It could not come back and dwell in a human life because the animal life has no soul. But the human life has a soul. See? Animal don't have a soul. It don't look like, no, he don't have to wear clothes and cover up its nakedness and say bad words and you know how to mean. Oh, yeah. See? They, they don't know it. They fell because they're under us. See? Human beings are above the animal life because they're a god of the animal life. That's right. It was in the beginning because Adam named them and had power over Genesis 126. He had dominion over all the earth. He was, he was made in the image of God and was made to be a, a lesser god. Jesus said so. said, didn't know what your law say? that you're gods and if they call them gods who the word of God came to you which was prophets how do you condemn me when I say I'm the son of God see there you are now now in this the father son and holy ghost now after he dwelt in the pillar of fire then came down and made himself a body brought himself down a tent of human flesh and dwelt in among us God dwelt 1 Timothy 3.16 without controversy Paul speaking, great is the mystery of Godness, for God was manifested in the flesh. Creator Seen of it. became Savior. Yeah. Creator became Savior. And the great song that Booth Cleburne wrote, the great Creator became my Savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in Him. See? Now, notice, Father, then He was the Father, away above us, couldn't even get around where He was at. Then He became Son, and we could touch Him, feel Him. He's a man. And then he gave his life. That blood cell was broken by a cruel, sinful Roman spear when it pierced his heart. And really a broken heart killed him. His water and blood separate. Grief. Broke the cell of grief because of the sin of the human race. He used to sing a little song. Oh, what precious love that Father had for Adam's fallen race. Gave his only son to suffer and redeem us by his grace. Now, there, that blood cell was broke. Now, when we lay our hands by faith upon that trembling Lamb of God, feel His flesh quivering and shaking for us, and our hands become bathed with His blood in our souls, the life that was in Him wasn't just a mere man, neither was it an animal. It was God. So that life comes back upon the sanctified one and becomes a son or a daughter. An offspring of God, see? The life of God, and we are sons and daughters of God through the breaking of that blood cell. Jesus Christ. Now what is it then? God is back in His people fellowshipping like He did in the Garden of Eden. See? There you are, sons and daughters. Isn't it beautiful? Beautiful. Oh. God back. Now, now we're going to finish the baptism and I must go. Now from that time, now, the next time baptism spoke of, Philip went down and preached to the Samaritans. Acts 8. I believe it is. Yeah, Acts 8. 7. Stephen's a stone. I think it's Acts 8. That Philip went down and preached to the Samaritans. And they had all baptized every one of them in the name of Jesus Christ. But the Holy Ghost had fell on none of them yet. Peter had the keys. He had so, unlocked to that He had to unlock to that generation. Then, when he goes down, and the Holy Ghost had fallen on none of them yet, yet they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter went out, him and John, and laid, Peter laid hands upon them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Now, then, while Peter was on the housetop one time at Simon the Tanner, he saw a vision because Cornelius the Gentile there's the Jew Samaritan now the Gentile and Peter was on the housetop 
taking a little nap before dinner, while he's fixing dinner, and he's seen a sheep being lowered down. All kinds of unclean, creeping animals from the earth is on it. And then when he did that, he heard a voice saying, Rise, Peter, slay and eat. He said, Nothing's ever come in my mouth unclean. He said, Don't you call unclean what I call, or common and unclean what I call clean. See? As a Gentile. And then when he come out of the vision, there was two men standing at the gate calling for him to go up. And he told, or spirit told him, Rise and go. Don't think about nothing. Just go on with him. Went to the house of Cornelius. He gathered up. Cornelius was a centurion. He called all his band together and they were all in there and uh, Peter was uh, explaining to him what had happened. Talk, and Cornelius told him that he saw an angel that told him to go down and ask for one Simon at a, a fellow Simon the Tanner's house. And while Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them, which heard the word. And Peter said, Can we forbid water? Seeing that they have received the Holy Ghost like we did, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Acts 19. If you want, that's Acts 10.49 there, sister, you're putting it down. See? Acts 10.49. All right? 10.47 on down to the end of the chapter reading. And then, when they come now to Acts... Uh, uh, Acts 19 baptism mentioned again Paul now now that makes everybody now the only time baptism was ever rendered was by John the Baptist first they was baptized over there they now but they wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus because they didn't know who he was yet okay? now but now when Jesus said Matthew 28 19 baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost and gave that expression to the man he gave the keys to that had the revelation of what is all about revealed from heaven. That's what you're getting right now. The revelation from heaven. Just straighten it out. It'll hit the target if you just stay right with it. It zeroed all right. It hit it then. Peter had the vision it zeroed it. This does it too. It brings it right back in. The gun shooting where it's supposed to shoot now. See. Yeah. Now, then Paul was the, was the apostle to the Gentiles. Is that right? He was a Gentile. Of course, God sent him to the Gentile. Now, now here, everybody then was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone, the Jews, were they baptized in Jesus' name? Acts 2, 38. Yeah. Samaritans, Acts 8, was they baptized in Jesus' name? Yeah. All right. Gentiles, in Acts 10, 49, they was baptized in Jesus' name, wasn't they? Yeah. Well, now, there's some more people running around there that isn't baptized in Jesus' name, yet they've been baptized. I guess it'll be all right then. So just let them alone because they've been baptized. What difference does it make? Baptized by John. Oh, say, oh, I, I, we won't see. No, we won't see where this is essential or not. <laughs> Acts nineteen. Paul, having passed through the upper coasts of Ephesus, he finds certain disciples. Now there was a young Baptist preacher up there, and um, his name was Apollo, which was Apollos rather. And uh, he was a brilliant man. Now, Acts, the 19th chapter. And he was, uh, he was a brilliant man. And he was, uh, he was proven by the Bible, like a real Baptist, that Jesus was the Christ by the Bible. And they had a, a revival up there, a great revival. And Paul had been put in jail for casting out a devil out of a fortune teller. And so him and Silas, and one night they got to praying in there and singing hymns, and the Lord come down and shut the jail down. So uh, then uh, after he had got delivered, went out and took the centurion and baptized him and his wife. His Paul's custom, of course, he was baptized in Jesus' name. And then when he took him and his uh, family out and baptized them. And then Paul went on his way. And he went over to Aquila and Priscilla, which were tent makers, friends of his converts to Christ. And they had been tending this revival up here with these Baptists. 18th chapter That's where you would read that, just one chapter before. Uh, so then... So then Paul passed through the upper coast of Ephesus. He finds certain disciples. They were disciples. They were Baptists. Fine preacher and everything. Proven by the Bible, Jesus is the Christ. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? Ah, you Trinitarian brother and sister used to really like to lay that into the Baptist. But I wonder if we can lay something back again. <laughs> you like to say, Ah, you Baptists. I thought you said you received the Holy Ghost when you believe. Paul said, have you received it since you believe? And these people were honest. They said, we don't know there will be one of any Holy Ghost. Now, if it don't make any difference after that, uh, baptism, water baptism don't make any difference, then why did this apostle ask this question? He said, then, to what were you baptized? Oh, they might have said this. 
Oh, we've been baptized. They said, we've been baptized unto John. And we're very well satisfied with it. The same man baptized Jesus Christ. Same holy water. Sure. I guess that you you just baptized by John, right? The same holy water Jesus baptized. You'd think it's pretty good, wouldn't you? But remember, the keys is locked in heaven. Peter did it on the day of Pentecost. Yes, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, it's a mystery. It's hid now. Whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Here's a revelation that only can come through this revelation. See, the seed. Paul said, but that won't work anymore. <laughs> Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? He said, he said, we don't know. It'll be when the Holy Ghost said then, to what was you baptized or otherwise to how was you baptized? They said, we've already been baptized. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Apostle Paul, we've been baptized. We was baptized by John the Baptist right there in the same holy water Jesus Christ was baptized in. If he was good enough for Jesus to baptize, yes, be ba- oh, he's, boy, I'm telling you, he's good enough for me. Hallelujah. But if they'd done that, they'd have never got it. But Paul said, Have you received it since you believe? Said, We know not where there be any Holy Ghost. Said, Then to what was you baptized? They said, Unto John. He said, John only baptized unto repentance, saying they was to believe on him that was to come, that is, on Jesus Christ. And when they heard this, they were rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That brings this group over this group. And they laid their hands up on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Now I'll tell you that every scripture in the Bible, every person in the Bible was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll take any man, any historian to this task If you can show me one speck of Scripture where anybody was ever baptized in the Bible, New Church, of course, he wasn't baptized in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament where any person is ever baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one place that that was ever called over them, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, then I'll compromise. And if you and I'll show you if you can show me one text of scripture where anybody was ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or one speck of history where anyone was ever baptized unto the ordaining or the setting in order the Catholic Church in A D six hundred three twenty five it is. A D three twenty five, three hundred and twenty five years after the apostles. Everybody continued baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ until 325. And then they made the organization, and in the organization, which the Catholic Church is a mother of all organizations, God never did organize the church. But in there, they substituted the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost because the Trinitarians, and then they had a great group that went rank in Trinitarian, and a great group that went rank in Unitarian, which both groups is wrong. But no, and any person that's baptized using those titles of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost ignorantly are ag- admitting that they are Catholics and denying what the Bible says. Now, my brethren, and you to listen to this tape, I'm, I, I want that through ignorance you do this. Don't just throw this away, these women, presenting this to you. But you owe it to yourself to sit down and study it and find out. Amen. If you're not, if you're a child of God, surely you'll give it that much consideration. The word of the Lord came to the prophets in the old days. The reason they called them prophets because they had the interpretation of the divine word, because they were divinely sent, and the signs and wonders that followed them proved that they were. God has said in His Scripture, if there be a prophet among you and if he says things and it's not right, don't come to pass, then don't fear him. But if it does come to pass, then you hear. For I am with him. And the very word prophet means a divine interpreter of the divine word. The signs and wonders that makes the word manifest is a sign that it came. Now, we believe that the gift of prophecy that ties the words together are the same. Now, not long ago, and maybe the same man may listen to this tape someday, that uh, I, at, at this taking place, it was Brother Sism of the Oneness. Now, you, you, many of you people listen to this would say, Brother Bram is a Oneness. I am not. I think you're both wrong. Both Oneness and Trinity. Not to be different, 
But it's always a middle of the road. Like Isaiah said, Isaiah 35 said, There shall be a highway. And you Nazarene brothers and so forth, you say, The grand old highway of holiness. I beg your pardon. It doesn't say the highway of holiness. So there shall be a highway and, and is a conjunction, and the way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Not the highway of holiness. The way is in the middle of the road. Each side is where the off falls fine. That's where you won this brethren went to on one side, and Trinitarian went on the other side, but the true message lays in the center of the road. Now, watch here. If you'll understand now, I'm laying three things out. Now, I'm taking this to be what Matthew said and to show you that both men said the same thing. But one, the Trinitarian people through, I hate to say this and don't want to say it, but I don't want to say through ignorance as the Bible said, but I mean that through misinterpretation, you can't make it run right, brethren. You'll never make it run right. It can't till you come back to the revelation and then the whole Scripture runs right. Now look here, my sisters and you, brethren, who are pre present. Matthew said, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now if you'll go get the emphatic diagnot of the Greek interpretation, original Greek interpretation from the Vatican, happens to be that I have one. It's, uh, it's out of print now, I think. Or any Greek uh, uh, translation, the right translation to Acts 2.38 Peter said, Repent, everyone, even be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The King James Version, you said, in the name of Jesus Christ. But in the emphatic diglot, it says, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you won this, brother, and just baptize in the name of Jesus, there are just many Jesuses. But there's only, He was born Christ, the Son of God. He, that's His name. That's what He is. Christ means the Anointed One. Messiah. Christ. Now, Jesus, eight days later, He was given the name Jesus when He was circumcised. And He is our Lord. So He is our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what He is. Now, Show that you'll see that Peter had the revelation I'm trying to tell you. Now look at these, these boxes on this side. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's what Matthew said. Ten days later, Peter said, Lord Jesus Christ. Now see, if these three titles isn't three names, are uh, uh, the one name of the three titles. Now look, Matthew said, Father. Is that right? The Peter said, Lord. Now David said, The Lord said unto my Lord. <laughs> now they both said the same thing there, didn't he? Right. Lord, thy Lord, Lord, thy God is one God is true. All right. Now, Peter said, In the name of the Lord. And Matthew said, A title to that Lord, which was Father. Lord's what he is. All right. Matthew said, Son. Who is the Son? Jesus said, Peter. Is that right? All right. Now, and Matthew said, Holy Ghost. Peter said, Christ, which is the Holy Ghost, the Logos that went out of God. Christ didn't use the Holy Ghost. <laughs> See, Father, Son, Holy Ghost is the Lord Jesus Christ. The whole thing, exactly. The Lord Jesus Christ. So that were titles and not... There you are. <laughs> now, I wish we had longer going to it, but it's getting late. Can we uh, pray just a moment? Our Heavenly Father, Thou dost know that we're not trying to try to say something here to confuse anyone. Father God, we're trying to take confusion out of their mind. And no doubt, but what they'll be lovely, fine Christian brothers, ministers, Trinitarian believers that will hear this. Our sisters may play it to their pastors. And I pray, Father, that you won't let my brethren think that I'm trying to act like a know-it-all or something. But, Lord, I am grateful that, that you give us the revelation of the Word. 
And I've tried to be like a, a Christian brother to them. Never mention it amongst the people. Just go ahead because, Lord, I believe they are your children. But they, they find these seemingly contradictions in the Bible and they've made a great issue out of it. The assemblies would not associate with the oneness. The oneness was called, which we know now and here in this meeting, fellowshipping with some of those brethren. And we do in every meeting. But Lord, we know they're all your children. But they made a great issue and pulled away and cut off. The assemblies will have nothing to do with them and they won't have nothing to do with the assemblies and the churches of God and so forth. And each one in doing so, Father, I realize they draw boundary lines and become stuck up and organized. And what did you do with both organizations? Laid them up on the shelf. And they're both dying and practically dead. Let honest hearted people see, Lord. I cannot open their eyes. You're the only one can do that. I present your truth by a revelation of Jesus Christ which ties the words together, God's Word, and make it the true Word. I pray that they'll not misunderstand, but will love you and serve you all the days of their life and walk in the light. Grant it, Lord. I pray for these women. And I pray that everyone that sees this will not cause them to be confused, but will cause them to be hungered and thirsting for more of God's revelations. Grant it, Father. I commit this to You now. And you do with it whatever seems good in Your hands. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen.